Hello, this is Tyler Crone with The Thundering 36. We are so delighted to have State Senator Monka Dingra, who is running for Attorney General, with us this afternoon. Welcome, Monka. Over to you. Thank you so much, um, really, for giving me this opportunity to be with all of you. Uh, my name is Monka Dingra. I am the Deputy Majority Leader of the Washington State Senate, Senior Deputy Prosecuting Attorney with King County, and I am running to be a next Attorney General. I have spent my entire career fighting for the people of Washington in the courtroom and in the State Senate, standing up for survivors of violence, immigrants, women, LGBTQI individuals. And as a King County prosecutor, I work to protect survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and trafficking. I worked on prosecuting gun crimes, hate crimes. And then I created the first in the nation therapeutic alternative unit, where I ran our mental health court, our veterans court, a diversion program. I helped uh, create the 40-hour crisis intervention training for law enforcement and trained at the Criminal Justice Training Commission for a decade uh, before running for office. I started my legal career at the Attorney General's office working in the Sexually Violent Predator Unit and spent a year clerking for Justice Barbara Matson at the State Supreme Court. And I'm running for Attorney General to protect the people of Washington, no matter what you look like, how you identify, or where you come from. And over the last seven sessions, I've been so proud to have played a central role in delivering major wins for the state of Washington. I have worked on and delivered on legislation protecting our voting rights, protecting and expanding access to reproductive and gender-affirming care, in uh, protecting our environment, worker safety, working on access, uh, mental health uh, access, including our 988 crisis intervention line. And it is this fight for justice, for standing up for people and delivering real change uh, to improve people's lives. This is what motivates me to be your next attorney general. We know our next attorney general must be both a good litigator and a proven fighter. And you don't have to take a leap of faith or guess on how I will show up. You have seen me lead. You have seen me fight over and over again and win. I have fought tough elections. I have fought for tough policies and I've fought for the people of Washington. Given what is happening at the national level, we must protect the rights of immigrants and refugees. We must protect the rights of women and LGBTQI individuals. We must protect the rights of workers. We have to fight for a safe and livable community and a safe and livable planet. And as your next attorney general, I will continue to hold corporations accountable defend uh, workers from unsafe conditions, protect our fundamental right to vote, and no one will fight harder for reproductive freedoms and LGBTQI uh, rights than I. And I'd be honored you. to have your support. Thank you. Our first question is from Shep. What, ac what accomplishment are you most proud of in your legal career? So this is um, a, a very tough question uh, for me because I am really proud of the career that I have always had. But so I'm gonna talk about my reputation because very early on in my life, I was actually told that the only thing you truly own in your life is your reputation. And I'm actually really proud of having the reputation of being someone who uh, fights for people of Washington, for someone who fights for um, tough issues and delivers results. And that reputation is something um, that really drives a lot of the work that I do because I'm not stand, uh, afraid to stand up and deliver real change. I have changed cultures my entire life by starting API Chaya, uh, organization to help survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault and trafficking at a time when no one in the Asian community wanted to even talk about domestic violence to changing cultures at the prosecutor's office by creating a therapeutic alternative unit by creating, trying to change cultures in law enforcement by doing the crisis intervention training, by changing cultures um, and standing up and running for office in 2017 when Trump had been elected. And um, so this changing of cultures is something I'm very proud of. And that's what I've done in the state of Washington through the work through the Poverty Reduction Task Force. We, I was part of that task force from the very beginning. And that task force is really focused on how government shows up for people and we have really changed that culture. And that is what I'm really proud of. Um, our agencies now talk about self-sufficiency and wealth generation when they talk about how they're going to show up to help the people of Washington. And you can only have those conversations once you acknowledge the historical trauma and, um, and the racist policies we have had as a country. And in the last seven years, I am really proud of changing cultures on how our agencies have been showing up for the people of Washington by uh, by working really on culture changes. And that is what I hope to bring to the attorney general's office 
is our reputation um, and of changing cultures. Thank you so much. Our next question is from Barbara. Well, uh, Senator, this is a complete change from this subject. Um, what is your position on antitrust issues and how would you address those as Attorney General? For example, healthcare mergers, tech industry power, the Albertsons and Kroger um, t uh, you know, takeovers. Um, can you talk about that? Thank you. And can I just say thank you for giving me the questions ahead of time, because this is literally one of the priorities I talk about when I give my introductory spiel. And so I had the opportunity to not talk about this and save it for this answer. Um, you know, this is something I'm extremely worried about. I'm someone who spent the last seven years on the healthcare committee. I'm the only candidate for AG that has a background in healthcare. Uh, I was very proud to uh, work on My Health, My Data. That was a data privacy bill that we passed in the state of Washington the only data privacy bill we have gotten across the finish line. I was honored to have been invited to the White House to actually present on this bill. And so the reason I mentioned that, because that is a combination of, of healthcare and of technology. And to tell you that I have led and delivered on both those issues. And as Attorney General, we have to make sure we are taking a look at what is happening. I was very proud of the work that AG uh, Ferguson did on the grocery stores, and I think we're going to continue to do that, but that has to then be followed up with healthcare. Uh, I'm very concerned about what's happening, not just with the consolidation of hospitals, but of insurance, of pharmacies, of pharmacy benefit managers. I was proud that uh, Keep Our Care Act passed the Senate. Uh, it died in the House. I can guarantee you that uh, if I'm AG, that will be agency request legislation because we have to make sure we're providing access to healthcare all across our state. Uh, we need healthcare from the time we're born to our last days on this planet. And we have healthcare deserts in the state of Washington. And for me, that is completely unacceptable. I was a Pew Charitable Trust fellow taking a look at healthcare in, in Washington and accessibility. And that is the skill set I will bring to this job because our next attorney general has to have that background in healthcare. Technology goes hand in hand. You know, my husband and I joke, uh, he thinks he's a lawyer because we've been married for 28 years. I think I'm an engineer because we've been married for 28 years. But there's some truth to it because the reason I was able to get that data privacy bill across the finish line when others have tried and failed so many times is because I'm comfortable talking about technology. I have access to experts. I know what is happening in the field. And when you come to this policy with that level of um, understanding, you are able to move the needle. And I'll just end uh, by saying this. I, we need to make sure that Washington is leading like the European Union when it comes to personal identifying information and where technology is heading. Thank you. Jeremy? Um, how do you view the current direction of the AG office? And what are some areas where you anticipate changing course or new policies? Thank you for that. I think Bob has done an incredible uh, job. I cannot imagine a better pers a person uh, right time, right person, right position. Um, and I think, you know, with Trump in the White House, that is what we needed. I'm extremely hopeful that is not going to be the case in November. And so a lot of the focus that I really want to do is internal to the state of Washington. I talked about changing cultures as something I'm very proud of. And that is what I want to bring uh, to the Attorney General's office, is really making sure that we are taking care of the people of Washington. And Bob's been a great partner, you know, um, with the Missing Murdered Indigenous Women's Task Force, when Representative Lekhanov and I were working on it, I called the AG's office and I said, hey, will you guys partner with us? And they were like, absolutely. Um, you're, no one will have to ask the AG's office to partner in this because I will be leading on this issue. We were the first in the country to have that task force. I was proud of the work in setting up the cold case unit. I was really proud to do the work with Rep uh, Orwell in ending the backlog of rape kits. And at that um, press conference, a reporter looked at us and said, Washington State has known about this problem for years. How come it took us till now to fix it? And Tina and I looked at each other because leadership matters. When you have people in positions of power who actually want to solve real problems, have a history of going into these issues and, and taking care of them, that's when you get results. And that is the focus I will have at the AG's office, is really taking a look at a lot of these problems we have in our state and resolving them. The True Blood Court decision with mental health and uh, in our state, that has to be resolved. I am the only one who has a background and expertise in mental health. 
We have to address what's happening at our state hospitals. We have to take a look at our civil commitment laws and see what's happening in our state. And so that is where you will see a change in course is like really working hard on a lot of these tough problems that are happening locally that are impacting Washingtonians. And our last question, thank you, is from Laura Marie. Hi. Uh, when considering the equity lens, what are some ways that the Attorney General Office can champion the smaller issues that are significant for individuals, but not necessarily grabbing the big headlines? Another one of my favorite topics, and thank you for again um, bringing this up so I didn't have to use my initial time for it. Um, you know, I created the first in the nation statewide office of equity. And I did that because, again, it's about making sure you change the manner in which our agencies, our government is showing up for people. And to me, I love that smaller is in quotes because that's what I'm going to use as well. That is where the AG's office can make a difference, right? The Attorney General's office is provides legal advice to all our agencies. And I would love to empower our assistant attorney generals to actually play a larger role in that attorney-client relationship and really playing a role in being problem solvers instead of simply providing liability advice, right? Attorneys in the room know when you give legal advice, you can say, here are your options, A, B, and C. Or you can say, here are your options, A, B, and C. But B is really the manner in which we want to lead. B is what the values of the state are. B is what the elected attorney general wants the culture to be in the state. And so how can the assistant attorney generals partner with the agencies um, to really create that change where our government agencies are showing up in the manner it is intended? Implementation of laws is a big deal. We pass these incredible pieces of legislation, but implementation doesn't always go the way it's intended. I want the attorney general's office to play a role in helping implement them in the manner intended, being a problem solver to make sure we're getting to the right result. And a lot of these are smaller issues, but these are the things that impact people directly. How is the Department of Corrections doing uh, its job in taking care of individuals? How is DSHS providing services? How is DCYF interpreting statutes on what it means for them to take care of children that are vulnerable? All of those issues are where an eight, the Assistant Attorney Generals play a role. And those are the types of smaller issues where I will really be making sure that government, again, is showing up in a manner that is consistent with our values. One of the best compliments I got, sorry, can I just finish this story? Um, you know, I was doing work in the Criminal Sentencing Task Force, and these are extremely um, volatile, technical meetings that last all day. And this woman came up to me, she was representing uh, families of the incarcerated, and she really had a, uh, wanted to answer, ask me this question about something we were discussing. And I spent like 45 minutes talking to her. And at the end, she looked at me and she said, I would have gone home and not been able to sleep because I was worried about this. I would have done research all day trying to figure out what just happened. And she said, you're the only one in this room that I could go to and feel comfortable asking and to me, that is what the AG's office needs to do, is be approachable for the people of Washington. Thank you so much. We'll now go into follow-up questions, and folks can raise their hand. We will do this briefly. Alex, your turn. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Senator Dengra. I have one very quick question. What do you see the Attorney General's office role in enforcing um, or in helping combat climate change? You know, um, I... A huge role. Uh, climate change is really personal to me. I was born in Bhopal, India. My father actually worked for the Union Carbide Gas Plant. Um, he used to complain about violations there, wasn't taken seriously. He died of colon cancer at the age of 40. That's when my mother moved to this country with my brother and I. And so I have seen firsthand what happens when you don't hold polluters accountable. And no one is going to do more to help to address that than me because I've seen that firsthand what happens to communities when um, when corporations are allowed to pollute. And you can't just have fines, you have to make sure the penalties result in behavior change. And that is what I'll be committed to doing when it comes to climate change um, and, um, and making sure we hold people accountable. Thank you. Jeremy? Um, could you speak a little bit about um, high-speed vehicular pursuits? Um, I know that for a long time in the Senate, you had been an opponent of re-legalizing those. Obviously, we know the bill passed, but um, what would what do you see your role as Attorney General in how to handle this issue? 
Yeah. So the 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 pursuit policy that was passed, it was a House bill that I voted for in the Senate, was policy that's consistent with uh, law enforcement actions in my district, city of Redmond, Kirkland, Bellevue, a lot of places in King County, Spokane, uh, even Thurston County had similar problems, uh, uh, policies. So I voted consistent with my direction, with my uh, constituencies. I had told law enforcement very early on uh, the second year that the bill was there that I don't believe the right policies to have this in statute. You got to make sure you actually have a group of people getting together, coming up with best practices through the Criminal Justice Training Commission and making sure then that every law enforcement agency is actually in compliance with the policy that has been developed that's based on best practices. Um, and um, there were a whole bunch of law enforcement officers and the CJTC that were going to be working on it. But people like politicizing policies. And I'm someone where you have seen me. I will stand up for what's right. I don't believe in playing politics. I believe in making sure we're getting results. And, um, you know, we 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 voted on the referendum um, to, to repeal that. And we're just going to have to see what impact that has. I already know there have been two uh, bystanders who have already been killed due to high-speed pursuits since um, that uh, change was made. Thank you. Chef? Uh, thank you. Um, you talked a bit about the mental health system, and um, my question to you is, most of the people who work in the mental health system are dramatically underpaid uh, relative to every other comparable um, industry. Uh, anything you can do about that? Um, you know, that is definitely something I've been doing as a as a legislature um, in really increasing that. But while I'll say as attorney general, I'm actually so uniquely situated and we haven't had an attorney general in years who has actually come from the legislature. I have an incredible relationship with legislators, House and Senate. You just have to take a look at my endorsement list to see that. I have a great working relationship with Bob Ferguson. I've been leading on mental health um, for decades. And so I really do see this as a, as a very amazing opportunity for all of us to work together and really making dramatic changes because we all have a really great relationship and a relationship based on trust. The AG's office has to play a much bigger role in addressing the true blood lawsuit. We're seeing prosecutors and defense attorneys all across the state shying away from doing civil commitment work. And these are individuals who are a danger to themselves or others. If they don't do this work, the AG's office is going to have to step in and do it because otherwise it's the criminal system that will be stepping in. And we're moving away from criminalizing individuals with mental illness. So you will see me play a very, very active role as attorney general in this arena. So Alex, super speedy quick. And then Monka, this will be the last follow-up. Thank you, Tyler. And given your, your background, Senator Dengra, and my work as a um, victim rights attorney, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, what do you see the role of the Attorney General's office when it comes to upholding victim rights, especially victims of gender-based violence? Thank you so much. I've just been honored to have received awards upon awards for my work in gender-based violence. I was really excited, you know, after the Me Too movement to see that change in culture. Um, unfortunately, we haven't gone far enough. We need um, individuals who believe victims, period. Absolutely, everyone has a right to defense. Um, and you have to have individuals who on both sides of sexual assault cases. But as a statewide leader, we need to make sure we're working on policies to address it. Um, through the Attorney General's Office, I already mentioned my work with missing uh, murdered Indigenous women. I've talked about my work in ending the backlog of rape kits. There is so much more we need to do in terms of how our state is showing up for survivors of violence. And this is an area that I will be really leading on in the Attorney General's Office because we need that culture shift dramatically. King County, one of the most progressive counties in our state, their rate of prosecution or even filing cases is, is really abysmal. And there's a lot more I can talk about trafficking as well, but I will stop since I see Tyler's hand. But these are all topics I really love and adore. And thank you for asking questions about these. Thank you so much, Senator Dingra. This concludes the formal part of our interview. Thank